Welcome to Philippine Forex, where we talk about anything to do with money in the Philippines. Today I want to talk to you about a new pitfall that I've run into. One of our subscribers is up against the wall on an agreement they have on a piece of land. So this latest pitfall uh, has been sort of confirmed by Lynn that this does happen. And to drive home again, never give earnest money. You don't know what the reason is that they want this earnest money. Sometimes it's just so that they can pay the bills to get the various uh, pieces of paper that are necessary for the sale com to be completed. And they don't want to spend any money until they know that the money's going to come at them. So they want this earnest money. But in some cases, that earnest money is a red herring. It is nothing to do with the sale of land. And maybe they're not even going to sell that land to you. So be careful of that, guys. Just say, you want earnest money? No, let's get the completion done now. Get it done fast and you'll have that money in your hands. Things like survey, we just paid for it and then took it off at the end. That's how we dealt with it. Because um, that was how we agreed to it and we had it signed. This other one now seems to be something to do with these OFWs. And you got to remember that there are some OFWs out there that are making good coin and they don't have you know enough to do when they get back to the Philippines they can't burn through that kind of money and so often a friend or a family member may say look I can't afford this anymore will you buy it from me I have a need maybe it's hospitalization whatever and maybe there's a verbal um, agreement where other witnesses are there or maybe even a legal letter has been drafted. The problem is that maybe a couple of years down the road, and this seems to be what this case is, a couple of years down the road the person knows the value of that land has gone up and now they're going to sell it because it's in their name. They just go to a different lawyer, nobody knows about this promissory note, and apparently this is what's happening to one of our subscribers. They're in the 11th hour and they want to get this complete. This is getting in the way. There's been a few suggestions that that should pony up a little bit more money, but I don't know what the magnitude of this money is. Give an example, um, maybe the lot was worth, you know, 300,000 pesos back five years ago, and the agreement is to transfer the land after five years, and they're at the 11th hour before that note is going to be put in place, and they just quickly sell it for 800,000, but there's still a 300,000 owing on it. Um, so from that standpoint guys you might want to consider having a letter drafted before you do the deed of absolute sale and have a letter drafted to say that, um, sorry had some dogs come up behind me there, um, have a letter drafted saying that the seller is responsible for any debts. Ay, ay, ay. You know should you have to go through all of this stuff? Well their paperwork system and stuff in the Philippines is just not what it is in your Western country, guys. And the legal recourse can be very painful. <laughs> you know, there isn't even arbitrators in many cases, so that's just the reality of it. Anyway, there we go. Another one you might want to think about when you're buying land in the Philippines. And remember, don't ever let this influence you on that piece of land because you should not be falling in love with it until you have the deed of absolute sale. Later Gators.